ProWrestlingTees.com slash 616 Entertainment is the home of all official 616 Entertainment merchandise. Pick up a shirt, you'll be glad you did. This video is also brought to you in part by the Patreon producers, without whom content like this would not be possible. Extreme Championship Wrestling a pioneer in the world of pro wrestling, not only for the blood and guts style that is predominantly remembered by, but for the expansion and evolution of the entire genre as a whole. Many of the high-flying moves, death-defying stunts, and bloodbath brawls we enjoy even now in 2021 grew from the seeds planted decades ago in ECW. You're probably aware that our favorite extreme wrestling promotion began its life in 1992 as Eastern Championship Wrestling, a subsidiary of the National Wrestling Alliance, or NWA, so I won't start this off with a 20 minute history lesson. Long story short, in 1994, everything changed. The NWA's Eastern Championship Wrestling was no more, and in its place, Extreme Championship Wrestling was born. This is where the expansion and evolution of the genre I mentioned earlier comes into play. Sure, the tables and barbed wire were awesome. There's a reason we all remember it to this very day, but what's often overlooked is just how many major, major players plied their trade under Paul Heyman's banner before US wrestling fans saw them anywhere else. I was a WCW kid growing up, and you bet your ass I was a Chris Jericho fan, a Rey Mysterio fan, a Raven fan, an Eddie Guerrero fan. Who wasn't? These guys were looked at as WCW stalwarts, and while that was indeed true, they all passed through ECW first. So with these future megastars under their umbrella, the insanely dangerous matches and cult-like fanbase, how is it that, unlike their WCW and WWF opposition, ECW didn't birth a single video game that stands the test of time? That's exactly what we're gonna dive into today. Hey Dan Dans, my name is Ian and I want to say welcome to another installment of Triangle X Squared Circle, the wrestling game retrospective series. You know, you guys have asked me for over a year now, maybe two years, I don't know, I lost track of time. You guys have wanted me to cover the video games of Extreme Championship Wrestling, but that's a big deal. There's only two of them, so if I'm going to do it, I wanted to do it right. So right here on this episode, we're diving straight into the history of ECW video games. Here's the thing with ECW. It's prime, it's absolute peak, it's golden era, and I think most fans and followers of the brand would agree with this, took place during the mid to late 90s. Look, from 1995 to 1999, ECW was on fire. We witnessed the rises of Rob Van Dam, Sabu, Tommy Dreamer, The Sandman, Taz, Just Incredible, Jerry Lynn, Rhino, Tajiri, and more. Fans of the promotion were treated to home video releases, pay-per-view events, a television series on TNN, even a brand new line of action figures featuring all of your favorite stars. ECW was awesome, man. It was different from anything else that was going on in wrestling across the entire country, and that made it special. So with all this coverage, all this merchandise, a video game couldn't be far off, right? Actually, yeah, you are right. In February of 2000, the first ever ECW video game would hit store shelves. The subtitle of Hardcore Revolution embodied the fuck you, it's time for a change attitude Extreme Championship Wrestling had built up since the day it was created. The developer behind Hardcore Revolution was Sculptured Software. What the hell did Sculptured Software ever do? Well. They were the team behind the Super Star Wars games, for one. Add in work on Mortal Kombat, The Punisher, The Simpsons, Doom, and nearly 10 unique games for the WWF, and you'll see that this team had indeed been around the block. And yeah, I said what I said. Sculptured Software were responsible for almost 10 WWF video games. From the 16-bit brawlers of Royal Rumble and Raw, to the arcade fighters of WrestleMania and In Your House, even into the 3D realm with Warzone and Attitude. You can watch my retrospective of WWF Warzone by clicking the link in the description. But the wrestling video game landscape changed in a big way in 1999. WCW had been paired up with Aki for years, bringing us classics like WCW vs. The World and even Revenge. The WWF had been aligned with Sculptured Software, delivering the aforementioned titles across practically every console known to man. And then, they weren't. 
The WWF wound up on a long-term deal with Aki, stealing WCW's tag team partner. In response, WCW signed on with EA. Sculptured Software were, well, they were left out to dry. They were the odd man out, a smaller, more hardcore, if you will, game developer that seemed to be passed over in favor of multi-million dollar corporations, stranded on the island of misfit toys, as it were. Do you see what I'm getting at here? Sculptured Software and ECW were seemingly a match made in hardcore heaven. If there was anyone who would understand that odd man out, extreme, balls to the wall ECW style, it had to be Sculptured Software, right? You'd be out of your mind to not expect them to take everything they had, every programmer, every animator, every resource in that company, and pour it into the effort to come back with a bang and debut Extreme Championship Wrestling on the video game front in a way that would put the entire wrestling game landscape on notice. And they did not do that at all, clearly. I'm gonna show you just how awesome I can be. This is raw gameplay of ECW Hardcore Revolution for the PlayStation. If you're asking your screen, are you sure that's not footage from WWF Warzone? Or like, a mod of WWF Attitude or something? Yes, I am quite sure. Although you're not far off, ECW Hardcore Revolution hit the Sony PlayStation, Nintendo 64, and Sega Dreamcast all on the same day. And everyone's reaction was exactly the same. I've played this already. What Sculptured Software had done with Hardcore Revolution was unthinkable, right? And I don't mean that in the sense that they recycled a previously used game engine, as that's exactly what the Aki Corporation did when they severed their contract with WCW and started developing video games for the WWF. They don't catch any flack for that. They're applauded for it. They're revered as one of the greatest of all time. But this was different. It was different in a big way. I may take a little bit of heat for this, but it's true. And you gotta let me finish what I'm saying before you get all upset about it. When it came to comparing World Championship Wrestling to the World Wrestling Federation in the late 90s and into 2000, they were largely the same in many regards. Do you like cool heel factions? Take your pick. You've got the NWO if you're a WCW fan, or you've got DX if you're into the WWF. Maybe you're more into brooding, darker, mysterious characters who always keep you guessing. Might I introduce you to Sting? Or perhaps The Undertaker? Nah, that's not you. You're more into bald, black trunks wearing world champions. No? Maybe iconic heel authority figures. Do you see what I'm getting at here? The two major players were largely similar. But ECW, Dan Dance, ECW was on its own. And you might be able to point to one of the categories I just listed off and fit an ECW character into that slot, but it's a square peg in a round hole. ECW wasn't built on or defined by a specific character archetype. ECW was defined by its rabid, and I mean rabid, audience. It was defined by its sheer unpredictability. It was defined, and I mean this in as positive a way I can, but it's markedly lower budget appearance. It was smaller buildings with hotter crowds and crazier action, convalescing into a product that was impossible to mistake as anything but EC-fucking-W. So when kids like me, who couldn't wait to see what an ECW video game would look and feel like, finally got our hands on it, you can imagine it was pretty disappointing to find out this was just WWF Attitude with a bunch of ECW stickers on it. The gameplay is 100% copied and pasted over. We're still entering complicated button combos to pull off every move, from a hip toss to a finisher. The entrances, the arena layouts, the steel cage, it's all the same. What the hell is here that makes this feel like ECW? The roster? I mean, not really. Sure, we have standouts like Raven, Tommy Dreamer, and RVD, but no, the wrestlers don't make this feel like ECW, and that's because they all still walk, talk, and even stand like the WWF guys from Attitude. How about the crowd, though? Are they the raucous, rambunctious, bloodthirsty group of savages you'd expect to find in the ECW arena? No. 
the only, and I mean only saving grace here, is Joey Styles on commentary. And that's commentary he does solo, by the way, which is not something I can ever recall happening in another wrestling game. His commentary isn't good, but it's here. And that's not a knock on Joey's actual work, it's just, in the game, it's mostly a bunch of no-context reactions, rather than his in-depth and fast-paced work we were used to in real life. <laughs> oh! Original gangster gets away with the choke. Pin pusher. Ugh. Oh. Vertical suplex. That kept player two oh. down. Oh. Hey! I like Joey Styles a lot. Don't get it twisted. I feel like I might have gotten a little bit of doubt when I said that there wasn't anything here to actually make this feel like ECW. What about the table crashing, ladder falling, balcony diving insanity that came along with the real life product? Nope. There are no tables in Hardcore Revolution, which is incredible seeing as though WWF Warzone, the first game to use this engine, featured breakable tables. And that was developed in 1997. There's also no ladders to fly off and no balconies to dive from. So, no. None of it. I told you. Let's talk about match types, though. I know you remember the classic last man standing matches from ECW history, right? No? Oh yeah, they didn't have any. The steel cage we've got here is the same, completely fabricated, nonsensical, no ropes or ring post bullshit from Warzone. Listen, I'll give Hardcore Revolution this. It was the first game I'd ever played that featured barbed wire ropes. That was a cool visual, I can't pretend it's not. But when you realize there's only one animation for the guys hitting the barbed wire and other than that it's the same as every other match, the luster wears off pretty quickly. And it's worth noting that Hardcore Revolution is rated M for Mature, making this the first wrestling game to ever get that rating from the ESRB. Why is it rated M? I have absolutely no idea. The vulgar language is censored. Time for a 187 on your f***ing ass! And the blood content is damn near the same it was in its WWF predecessors. Uncharted Drake's Fortune is rated T, for Christ's sake. And I'm not joking when I say you kill over a thousand people across that story mode, with a multitude of firearms and explosives. So why is ECW rated M? Well, because it's extreme. AKA, it looks better on the box for marketing purposes. You know what Paul Heyman always said, hide the negatives, accentuate the positives. When the ability to book your own matches gets boring way faster than any $50 game should, you start to look outside of exhibition mode at what else the game has to offer. Create a wrestler is practically the same it was in WWF Attitude, so next. Career mode has you taking your wrestler through the ranks, show by show, until... Yeah, it's the same as WWF Attitude. It is worth noting, though, that winning championships and completing specific tasks unlocks a multitude of hidden characters. We've got the all-time Bay Beulah McGillicuddy, Taz, who had left for the WWF before the game released, and even Louis Spicoli, an ECW alum who had died a full two years before the launch of Hardcore Revolution. It's said that his inclusion in the game was a personal favor to Tommy Dreamer, who references his fallen friend in his pre-match promos. ECW Hardcore Revolution was a letdown of epic proportions. An extreme letdown, if you will. It reviewed very poorly across the board, but somehow, probably on name value alone, it managed to sell several hundred thousand copies. And I'm not gonna lie to you, when I was younger, I played Hardcore Revolution quite a bit. Did I own it? Hell no I didn't own it. But, I think I rented this game probably like 10 times. I can't explain it. I knew it wasn't a true ECW experience, but I wanted it to be so bad that I just kept coming back to it. Well, there's that and... My friends and I found it very funny when Roadkill would say, CHICKENS! I don't know why. I can't explain it. We were young and dumb, what do you want? After what was undoubtedly a less than stellar first effort, what would be next for Extreme Championship Wrestling on the video game front? Would Sculptured Software scrap the nearly five-year-old skeleton of WWF Warzone and really give ECW the fresh, unique treatment it deserved? Well, in just six months' time, we'd get our answer. And no, I did not misspeak. ECW Anarchy Rules released six months after Hardcore Revolution. You're probably thinking, Wait a minute. There's no way you can be able to do anything good in six months. No way. Unless. Nope. Sorry. 
I am not kidding when I tell you this. It's literally WWF Attitude again. Again! Sure, they added some new moves here and there and a couple new match types. Which we'll get to. Hold your horses. But it's the same fucking game again. How a claim or sculptured software, whatever the hell they were calling themselves at this point, thought that was acceptable to do again, I have no idea. Here's what I'm thinking. ECW's in the fucking shit. They're on life support. We got these guys locked down for two games. We pop them out before they kick the bucket. Well, how long do you think it's going to be before they're out of business? I'm thinking anywhere between, uh, I don't know, five minutes and uh, six months. So what do we do? Have you been paying attention to fucking anything these past four years? We do what we always do. You put the same fucking game out and you add, like, two new things. So what do we add? It's... It's extreme, right? Should we add something extreme? I know we really didn't do that last time. I don't give a flying red's ass what you do. You can make a match where you fucking throw a guy in the burn hot fire and he dies. I don't care. What are going to do to each other? Did that conversation actually take place? I don't know. But how the hell else would we have wound up with the Brimstone match? This doesn't have an ECW aura about it. It doesn't have any aura about it, because it's not a real match! What else did they do here to up the extreme factor after completely failing on Hardcore Revolution? Oh, I got it. How about a dumpster match? You can count on your own ass how many dumpster matches there were in ECW history, because it's another complete and total miss. I'd like to face the developers at Sculptured Software in a dumpster match so I can throw them inside the goddamn thing, and they can find copies of their own ECW games at the bottom. But there's gotta be more here, right? Of course there is. Let me introduce you to Rage in the Cage. Is it an extreme cage match? Nope! It's the UFC octagon dropped right in the center of the ECW arena for some reason. The fuck is this I'm hearing about you idiots putting in a UFC cage or whatever? You said we could do whatever we want! <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. Why is the floor of the octagon brown? I don't know. Is it supposed to be dirt, or is it a brown canvas? If it is dirt, why does this cage have a dirt floor? I don't know. <laughs> Come on! Listen, it's either this or the backlot match, and unless you want to run around outside the ECW arena and step on a used needle or see a rat the size of Hornswoggle running down the street on its hind legs carrying an entire boxed pizza, I recommend you stay inside the building. Maybe this big fucking cage will keep you safe. You know what's funny, though? Hardcore Revolution was rated M for Mature. Anarchy Rules allows you to burn an opponent alive and listen to them scream out their final breath, and it's got a T for Teens rating. What changed? Anarchy Rules is inarguably more vulgar and violent than its predecessor. Much like the development of this game, it makes no sense whatsoever. Nor does their table match that they've added here. Listen, table matches are some of my favorites of all time. You win by putting a guy through a table. It's simple. Here in Anarchy Rules, it's not that simple. <laughs> because why would it be? The ring is surrounded by tables that you cannot interact with in any way. They stay put. Merely coming in contact with them at all breaks them in half. And there's no animation for it breaking. Don't get crazy. There are two frames, unbroken and broken. How do you win? Pinfall or submission. Good lord. The things that really catch you off guard in Anarchy Rules have very little to do with the gameplay, and you might not notice them at all unless you're really paying attention. Would you believe that this is the first time Dusty Rhodes has ever been playable in a video game? I'm not kidding. And no, his role as a manager in Revenge does not count. That's why I said playable. This is also the only video game to ever feature Joel Gertner on commentary. Ah, a dastardly one! Almost tapped ah, out! That should have put him out! Dusty ah. Rhodes escapes somehow! There are jobber characters early on in career mode, one of which is longtime Ring of Honor booker Gabe Sapolsky. So that's something. And hell, ECW wrestlers use popular songs from big name artists as their entrance music without permission, which obviously couldn't be done here in the game, but we do have New Jack's custom theme song which was recorded by New Jack himself. 
Normally on an episode of Triangle X Squared Circle, I'll run down a long list of positives and then I show up on camera and say, unfortunately, not everything was perfect. This has been the exact opposite. I've been pretty hard on the ECW video games and with good reason. But fortunately, there are some positive aspects that I'd like to shine a light on. First and foremost, I think it's really cool that we can create our own rings and arenas. Is this a feature that's been around since WWF Attitude? I mean, yeah, it is. But, they didn't cut it out. And when you really think about it, we didn't have this type of control over creating our own rings and changing the colors of the ropes and turnbuckle pads again until the release of WWE 12, which was more than a decade after Anarchy Rules release. And speaking of features the 2K games touted as being new and innovative, Anarchy Rules has a create a match feature. Do you want tables surrounding the ring, but you can only win by landing your finisher? You can make that happen. Do you want to book a barbed wire two out of three falls match? Go for it. Sure, the options are limited, but they're here. Ugh, I mean, both of the positives I've chosen to highlight have been in the game since WWF Attitude, but I'm grasping at straws here, guys. ECW Anarchy Rules was met with even worse review scores than its predecessor, and you guessed it, didn't sell nearly as well either. The Nintendo 64 version of the game was straight up canceled. Hardcore Revolution moved units based on the ECW logo being on the cover of a PlayStation, Nintendo, or Dreamcast box. And when fans took it home and experienced a massive disappointment, there was no way you were going to earn their trust again just six months later. Especially when they can just flip to the artwork on the back and see that it's still just a reskin of WWF Attitude. Two years later, Sculptured Software, aka Acclaim, would move on to the Legends of Wrestling series, culminating with Showdown in 2005. Which you can learn all about by watching my Triangle X Squared Circle retrospective on Showdown. Link in the description. But what about ECW? What would become the baddest, bloodiest, most brutal promotion in the US? Well, there's a reason Acclaim didn't launch a new ECW game in 2002. Remember the six months between Hardcore Revolution and Anarchy Rules? Well, there were six months between the release of Anarchy Rules and ECW going out of business. The blood and guts, for the people, grassroots promotion that kickstarted its rise to prominence in 1994 was dead just seven years later. We look back on ECW as one of the all-time major players, even now, 20 years after its doors closed for the last time, and that just goes to show how special Extreme Championship Wrestling was. Look, TNA, or Impact Wrestling, is in its 19th year of operation. 19 years! But do we look back on Impact with the same hardcore love and blood-soaked affection as we do ECW? No, not even close. And even with as disappointing as these games were, and honestly still are, we forgive them. Click that like button right now if you're watching this video and you know, deep down, that you have positive memories of these games. I may not have owned Hardcore Revolution, but my grandma bought me Anarchy Rules for my birthday. And you bet your barbed wired ass that I played this game like it was one of the best in my collection. It's not always about polish and greatness, you know? Sometimes a less than stellar, low budget, poor production quality piece of entertainment can bring you just as much joy as the greatest of all time, based merely on how we feel about it and what it means to us. So in that way, the ECW video games are a little more similar to ECW as a whole than we may have realized. Or I'm reaching really hard because I don't want to close this on a negative note. Work with me here, guys. Dan Dans, this was my Triangle X Squared Circle retrospective on the video games of ECW. Or the history of ECW video games. I don't know, whichever one sounds better. I hope you guys enjoyed watching and I hope you played back some of those memories in your mind because that is the entire idea. Season 2 of Triangle X Squared Circle has been a heavy hitter, as promised. We're only three episodes in and we've already covered six individual games. Can you believe that? Next time out, the main event quality isn't going anywhere, as WWF WrestleMania 2000 on the Nintendo 64 is finally getting its due. Until then, I love ya, and I will see you next time.
Now that the video is over, I want to give a very special shout out to a couple special Dan Dans over on the 616 Entertainment Discord. Any of you guys can join if you like. As you can see, I asked for a drawing of a big rat holding a pizza box running on his hind legs. Uh, it was just a joke that I wrote, and I was like, you know what? I want to see if somebody will draw this. Now, I asked on very short notice, so I said it's okay if it's just a bullshit sketch, but a lot of, a lot of the Dan Dance came through, and I appreciate that, so you know I love you.